Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also, welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series here on the channel. Now, this is the longest running tutorial series in the history of this channel. And the thing is, even though there's a lot of episodes, you can watch them in any order. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out the touch command. It's an important command to learn, but thankfully, it's also really easy to learn. It has two different purposes. One, it'll create a file if it doesn't already exist. And two, it'll update the timestamp on a file if it does exist. It's a simple command, but it is important. So without any further hesitation, let's get started. To get started, we're first going to make sure that we have the touch command available. But the thing is, the majority of you will have this available because most distributions include this by default. We could confirm that by typing Command-V, and we'll give it the touch command as an argument. As you can see, I do have the touch command available on my system, but if for some reason you don't have it installed, then all you should have to do is install the core utils package. For example, on Debian and Ubuntu systems, you can run sudo, then apt install, and then core utils just like that. In my case, I already have it available, so there's nothing for me to do. But if any of you don't have the touch command available on your system, then all you should have to do is install that package. We're making sure the core utils package is installed and touch is a part of that package. But once you've confirmed that you have the touch command available, how do you use it? Well, what I'll do right now is go over its basic usage and then we'll expand from there. And to show off my environment a bit, you can see that I have a few directories here within my home directory, but nothing major. I just wanted to show you what I have currently because what we will be doing is creating files with the touch command and I wanted to show you what my directory listing is currently before we start doing that. Anyway, let's see it in action. So what I'll do is type touch just like that and what I'm going to do is give it a file name as an argument. I'm just going to call my file hello world.txt as you can see right here and keep in mind this particular file does not exist as of right now but when I press enter and then I list the storage, you'll see that the file does exist. And this is going to be a very common example when it comes to the touch command. If you use the touch command and provide it with a file name, it'll simply create an empty file. And you might be wondering why you'd want to create an empty file in the first place. And to be fair, it's not going to be something that you'll do every day, but you might end up in a situation where a file needs to be present with a specific file name, and the touch command is one way you can create a file. One example of why this might be useful is when you have a service that works with one or more log files. Sometimes you'll find yourself moving a log file to another location, such as moving it to an archive directory for safekeeping. Most of the time, if a service finds that its log file is missing, you know, you moved it to an archive directory, it'll simply attempt to create that file again, and it'll do that automatically. However, some services will outright fail if its log file isn't present, and the touch command is the fastest way to ensure that a file exists. Now the file won't contain any content, but it will make it exist. We just saw an example of using it to create an empty file, but what happens if a file already exists? Well, in that case, the behavior of the touch command will be a bit different. And to see what the difference is, what I'll do is type touch, and I'm going to give it the same exact file name as last time. Now note that this time the file does exist. Originally it didn't, so it created the file, but now what we're going to do is run the touch command against a file that does exist. I'll show my file listing again, and as you can see, the timestamp has changed. When you use a touch command and provide it with a file name, it'll create an empty file if it doesn't already exist under that name. However, if the file does exist when you run that command, it'll simply update the modification time. So, as you just saw, the behavior of the touch command changes depending on whether the file you reference already exists or not. But the thing is, though, it's not going to be super common that you'll need to update the modification time of a file, but sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation where that makes sense. One example has to do with backing up files. If you run a backup program or script to copy files to a backup server, it's often the case that the utility you're using won't back up the file again if it's already done that. But maybe you do want the file to be backed up a second time, regardless of whether or not the file is actually changed. So if you use a touch command against it, 
Then any backup utility that grabs files based on modification time will see that the modification time has changed, which will then result in the utility backing up that file again. Now another example of the touch command that I want to show you is the fact that you can use it to create more than one file at the same time. We've already used it to create hello world.txt. So what I'll do is just create a few empty note files. And you get the idea. So I'll press enter and check out what happens. The modification time of hello world was updated because that file already existed when I ran the command. However, the empty notes files did not exist, so I went ahead and created those as well. Now before we continue, something I want to show you is the date command. This is something that I've covered in another video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it right now. But the short summary of that command right there is that it's going to show you the current date and time according to your system. And that's how you can check the current time on your system, which will help you understand what the timestamp might be when you run the touch command. So for example, if I run the date command, you'll see that the time is currently 223. And then I run it against the hello world.txt file. You'll see that the timestamp was updated accordingly. So as you can see, the time was 223, and also the hello world.txt file was updated with 223 as its timestamp. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I wanted to let you guys know that there's some new products available in the Learn Linux TV merch shop that you should definitely check out. And there's something for everyone. For example, the dark side of the terminal shirt for sysadmin rock stars, a classic red tee with a Debian swirl for distro loyalists, and of course, the infamous By the Way I Use Art shirt for maximum effect at meetups. There's also the classic apt install coffee shirt for those of you that have caffeine fueled working sessions. And there's some other cool things like drinkware, stickers, buttons, and a lot more. In fact, if you're obsessed with Linux, there's a shirt for that too. Every purchase helps support the channel and lets you rock some seriously geeky fashion at the same time. Just visit the URL that you see on the screen, get yourself something nice, and support Linux learning. I would really appreciate it. Thanks again, everyone. And with that out of the way, let's get back to our video. And speaking of the timestamp, something that you can also do is choose a specific timestamp for the file rather than the current system time. And here's how you do that. We'll type touch. I'll use the option dash T. We want to update the timestamp. And what I'll do right now is type a timestamp right here, and then I'll explain exactly what's going on. Now, as of the time I'm recording this video, it's currently July 23rd. And it's probably self-explanatory when it comes to that particular timestamp. We have the year, we have the month, we have the day, we have the hour, and then we have the minutes. So I'll press enter, and let's see what happens. In this case, as you can see, the timestamp for hello world.txt is updated. It's now showing a date of July 22nd and a time of noon, as you can see right here. So if you ever run into a situation where you need to make sure that a particular timestamp is applied to a file, that's how you do it. And again, there's the command right there. So if you want to play around a bit, you could adjust the timestamp to something else. For example, if I wanted to change it to 1999, you can see that the timestamp now shows the year of 1999. But anyway, just play around with that command and have some fun with it. But I wanted to show you at least that it's possible to update the modification time to a particular time if that's something that you want to do. If nothing else, you can add the dash T option to your notes and maybe you'll need it someday. So as you can see, you can update the modification time on a file with a touch command. However, you should take care while adjusting modification times. The thing is, it might result in negative behavior if you're not careful. For example, if you change the modification time of a file, you might trick a backup utility into thinking that it doesn't need to back up that file because it's showing an older date. In that case, an important file might miss a backup. But not only that, changing a file's modification time might even be a policy violation. For example, if your company ever becomes a victim of a cyber attack, checking when files are modified is part of the process of investigating the breach. Just be mindful that modification times often play a role in various aspects of system administration, 
and you should only update modification times if you have a particular reason to do so. However, since we're creating brand new files with a touch command during this tutorial, it's not going to make a difference for us because none of these files are important. But anyway, just keep in mind that modification times actually do have an overall effect on the system and just exercise caution while you update them. Anyway, what I'll do right now is show you some additional options with a touch command. And one of them is the fact that the touch command works with directories as well. We've only been working with files so far in this video, but you are able to use it against directories. And this means that if you do need to change the modification time of a directory, you could do that with a touch command, and it's done the exact same way. Basically, the touch command is smart enough to understand the difference between files and directories, and it's able to update the timestamp on both. For example, here we have directory 1 and directory 2. So what I'm going to do is update the timestamp on directory 2. Just like before, I'm going to give it a file as an argument, but in this case, the file is actually a directory. So let's see what happens. And as you can see, the timestamp was updated on directory 2. Even though that was a directory, the same thing still applies. If you want to update the modification time on a directory, you can do that, just like you can with a file. Now for the next example, we're going to reverse the logic a bit. As I explained a few times now, if you give the touch command a file name, it's going to create that file if it doesn't already exist, and update the timestamp if it does. But what you could also do is disable the creation of files. So for example, I'm going to run touch-c against file.txt. Keep in mind that file.txt does not exist. And if I list the storage, you'll see that it still doesn't exist. So basically what the dash c option does like I mentioned, is it disables the ability for touch to create a new file, but if the file does exist, it will update the modification time. So for example, what I'll do is just take the dash C option off of this command right here. As you can see, the file was created at 1433. Now what I'm going to do is use the dash C option, just like you see right here, and I'm going to run it against file.txt. And as you can see, the timestamp was updated. It was just a difference of one minute, but you get the idea. And we accomplished that with the dash C option, as you can see with the command right here. And again, what this command variation is going to do is update the modification time of a file, but it will not create the file if it doesn't already exist. For the next example, I'm going to show you a scenario where we're also going to update the timestamp, but we're going to do it a bit differently. For reference, here again is my local directory listing. We see the files that are located in my current working directory. And what we're going to do is take the timestamp of a file and apply it to another one. And this might come in handy when backing up files. I know I use that example a lot, but the thing is you should be backing up your files. But let's say that you've created a file that's very important. So you decide to copy it to a flash drive or maybe a backup location. If you check the timestamp for the backed up file, it might show today's date, even though it wasn't actually created today, you were just simply backing up an existing file, which was created last Tuesday. But the thing is, you might want the timestamps to match, and you could do that with the dash R option, and I'll show you how to do that right now. And to set this command up, what we're going to do is choose a file as a reference file. It doesn't matter which file it is, you can just pick any file that you have access to, and just keep in mind which one you chose. In my case, to make it fun, I'm going to use hello world.txt as the reference file, mostly because the timestamp shows that it was edited back in 1999. Obviously, we know that's not the case, but what I'm going to do is apply that timestamp to another file. And to do that, I'll type touch, then dash r, and the first file we're going to give it is the reference file. And then we're going to give it a destination file, and randomly, I'll choose notes2.txt just like that. And the command should be that simple. If I list the storage, you'll see the difference right away. Notes2 previously had a date of July 23rd of 2025, and now it has a date of July 22nd of 1999. So if you want to take the timestamp of an existing file and apply it to another file, you could do that with the dash R option. And you know what? That's about it for the commands that I'm going to show you in this video. The touch command is not really the most advanced command at all. In fact, it's probably one of the easiest that I've covered in this series so far. But it is a command that you should definitely know, which is why I decided to cover it in this series. 
Although it's not something that you'll use every day, it's definitely something that you will use every now and then, so I do recommend that you keep some notes available for the command in case you need it. And there's our video. In this video, we checked out the touch command and I hope it helped you out. If it did, then be sure to click the like button to let YouTube know, I would really appreciate that. Anyway, I have all kinds of Linux related shenanigans coming out on this channel very soon. And if you wanna see those, then definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.